Hi everyone, this is our channel, Meet the Real Story. Please, like, share and subscribe. Hey everyone, my name is Gwen. My story is different from anything you've ever heard before in your life. We all have grandparents, and we all love them very much. When they die, they leave an empty space in our hearts. It's never easy. My grandpa died a year ago. Before he died, he left me an old weird-looking chest, which I never thought to open before, until today. I opened the chest, but all I found in it were two pieces of paper. One of them had only two words, Grandpa's house, and the other had a map drawn on it. I thought for a while, then I decided to go to my grandpa's old house and check things out. So, I went to the house. As I took out the key to open the door, the door opened wide. There was no one else there. I was scared, but I was curious to find out more about the map. So I went in. As soon as I got inside, the door slammed shut behind me. I was shocked and scared, but I wasn't going to back out now. The house looked so creepy and eerie, like it was abandoned for a hundred years. And it felt so cold. Cold, like standing on ice. I opened the map in my hands and looked around. It showed the inside of the house. I followed the path till I reached a door. When I stood in front of it, it opened slowly on its own. Terrified, I took two steps back, but I glimpsed a shadow inside, so I moved forward. I stepped in, but with nothing under my feet, I fell, rolling over down the stairs. It wasn't a room. It was the basement. I tried to get up, but there was something on my legs. Of course, it was too dark to see what it was. Every time I take it off, it falls back again. I looked for my phone, but it wasn't in my pocket. Oddly enough, when I looked again, it was there. I took it out, and I turned on the flashlight. And there was my surprise. On my legs was the bony arm of a skeleton. I kicked it away and stood up quick. I lit around the room with my phone, but it was full of skeletons all over. Of course, no need to tell you I was scared the heck out of my wits. What happened next was beyond the understanding of an average person. The eyes of one of the skeletons turned bright red, and they were staring right at me. My feet started moving backwards automatically, and I found two bony hands clasping my neck. I freaked out, but then... Suddenly, all the skeletons moved and stood in two lines, clearing a path for me. The map in my hand was glowing and indicating a place in the room. I moved towards it, slowly as my knees buckled together. There was a huge chest. When I opened it, I found a ton load of money. Strangely enough, all the skeletons had disappeared, and the furniture in the room was floating around the air. I got scared and I ran for it. But I came to the stairs, and I found the door locked. It wouldn't open. The skeletons appeared around me once again, and they were pulling me off the stairs. I soared through the air, and landed on the chest. Then, I was out cold. When I came to, I found myself inside the chest, like it was a coffin of some sort, and I was lying inside, feeling numb all over. I could see the sky, but it was cloudy. I felt like I was being buried. Then, I heard a voice. It said, Welcome to your grandpa's treasure. This is what happens to people like me. Dumb people like me who follow a stupid map to look for their grandpa's worthless treasure. They'll tell you their stories from their graves. Hello everyone, I'm Lauren. Did you ever wonder what it would be like? To have your life completely destroyed by someone close to you? Ever thought about what you would do then? I didn't have time to think, because that's exactly what happened to me. It all started two years ago. I lived a quiet life with my mom and dad and my sister. I loved my family. We were always together. We were happy. Until that fateful day. My dad got fired from his work. A big company. He had worked there for 20 years. The only money we had then was what he had managed to save over the years. Finding a new job wasn't easy. It was a hard time for all of us, especially my dad. 
he was becoming desperate. At times, he just sat there, quietly, deep in thought, and I rarely saw him smile since. One late night, we were still up waiting for him when he walked through the door. But something was different. He wasn't walking straight. It was the first time in my life seeing him drunk. I decided to take matters in my own hand. I started job hunting. I was lucky enough to find something suitable at a startup company. The pay was good enough. And the more I worked, the more I earned. I was trying my best to get our life back. I was giving it all I've got. My dad started asking me for money. I was more than happy to give him what he needed. I didn't even ask what it was for. Then he started asking for more. He came late almost every night, and he was never awake in the morning. It seemed like we hadn't talked together for ages. Then, money started disappearing from my purse. I got home from work one night. It had been a long day, and I was really tired. I put my bag in my room, and I went to the kitchen to find something to eat. I made myself a sandwich, then took it back to my room. But when I got to the door, I saw a shadow moving inside. I thought everyone was asleep, so I opened the door slightly and looked inside. I couldn't believe what I saw. My dad was standing over my bag, and my wallet was in his hand. He found no money in it, so he threw it on the bed and started going through my purse. At that moment, my mom came down the stairs. She had my dad's shirt in her hands and a small pack of white powder. I looked at her face. Her eyes were filled with tears. I tried to speak but found nothing to say. My dad came out of my room. He saw us standing there. Suddenly, everything changed. He tore the shirt and the pack from my mom's hands. He was hysterical. He started breaking things around him. My mom and I were too scared to move. But then my sister came running down the stairs. He pulled her towards him and held a knife to her throat. He threatened to kill her if we didn't give him money. Without a moment's thought, I did what he asked. Things only got worse. Nothing was ever enough. He asked for more and more money, and if I refused, he'd get violent, beating up anyone in his path. I couldn't stand by and watch, so I would just give him what he wanted, until I decided enough was enough. He barged down the stairs one evening and asked for all the money I've got. I told him we had expenses to pay, the rent, school fees, but none of it mattered to him. He asked me again for the money and threatened me if I didn't do what he asked. I refused. He hit me so hard that I crashed my head against the wall and fell to the floor, bleeding. Everything went dark. My mom took me to different hospitals, and I had to do a lot of checkups and tests, but all the doctors said the same thing, that this was it. I was sentenced to live my life in darkness, never to see the light again. Bumping my head against the wall was one of the reasons, but apparently my psychological state played a huge role in my recovery. The doctor suggested that I'd be taken to a psychiatrist. My dad felt sorry for what he had done to me. He quit the drugs and alcohol, tried to be proper, but it was because of him that I was in this state. I didn't know if I could ever find it in myself to forgive him. I was torn inside. He was my dad, but I couldn't forget what had happened. I stopped talking shortly after, and he left.